right, well, here it is, everybody. We have some spring weather, and yes, it is a very, very nice day to go out and go for a little drive because, well, quarantine is kind of kind of boring. I mean, sitting around at home, not really being able to do anything. I am lucky enough that, well, I do have an area where I can actually go outside and not be around anybody. So I'm going to share that with you guys today. We're just going to get in one of the cars. I think today we're actually going to take out the Porsche Boxster and we're just going to go down the back roads, have a little bit of fun. And I'm just going to talk a little bit of a few of the quirks about owning a Porsche. If you guys, maybe you're thinking about buying one or you always kind of wondered, you know, what's it like to own one of these cars? I've had this one for over 10 years, I believe, or around 10 years, something like that. So I definitely do have a little bit of experience with this car and you know, some people, I, I think the Boxster kind of got a bad name just because it was the cheaper version of a Porsche and, you know, a lot of people could afford it and they're like, oh, well, you know, all these, uh, you know, people that normally couldn't afford a Porsche now would just buy a Boxster. So we're just not going to really care about the Boxster. But the Boxster is actually a very, very sophisticated piece of driving machinery and I'm going to show that to you guys today. But speaking of sophisticated driving machinery, we do have our uh, Mud Mouse. Yep. Special edition right there. Get this thing out of the way and then we can get the Porsche out of the garage. Built Ford Tough. Take two. All right. All right, so here it is tucked away in the back corner. And one thing I gotta say, if you own one of these cars and you park it, definitely pop your frunk. Because especially on the earlier models, they're electronically released. And if your battery goes dead, there's really no good way to pop this frunk unless you know, you're able to backfeed the battery through the cigarette lighter, which I've had to do before. And on the newer models, like 99, they started doing this. They put a little post kind of right by the fuse panel and you can actually hook a, a battery to it like with a jumper cable. And then you can actually jump the battery and be able to pop this. But this car was before they figured that out. So yeah, I have had a dead battery. I've had the front closed and it was a little bit tricky to get it open. But actually, if you reach underneath the bumper, you can find the cable and you can pull on it and it'll pop. But it's definitely not something you wanna do unless you really, really have to. But how I store mine, I always leave the frunk open, disconnect the battery so it doesn't end up going dead on you, cause it will. And then, let's hook that up. I'm gonna have to go get a wrench, tighten that down. And I have to grab the keys anyway, and we'll get this thing outside. All right, we got our key, we got our battery connected. Let's unlock open our trunk and then we can go over here check the oil before we fire it up all right so as the car was idling here i did hear a little bit of a lifter tap and i just kind of wanted to double check the oil so after letting it run for like 10 minutes i turned it off and then checked the oil again and it was just slightly a little tiny bit low and when you do fill up oil on these cars check this out take cap off and then you've got this little funnel that's built right in it's got a little spring on it so you don't spill those germans think of all kinds of little quirks to add to their cars. So the 1998 986 Porsche Boxster. There's a few things that, especially owning American cars, I notice is very different about this one. And one being the paint. I mean, look at the paint on this thing. I mean, this car is filthy right now, it's so dusty, but just there's no orange peel at all. All the paint on this thing is completely flat. And this is the Arctic Silver, I believe. And this was actually an optional color and these wheels were optional as well. So this car was specced it out pretty nice. There's only a couple little things that it doesn't have. One being, well, it doesn't have any cup holders. So yeah, that's kind of a thing. So if you go through the drive-thru, you end up having to hold your drink. I think what they did, they actually had a cup holder that went out of the center console. It might've been in the later years, but either way, this car doesn't have that. And there's a CD changer that was optional. This car doesn't have that either, but 
nothing that I really miss. I mean, this is more or less a driving toy and I've had a whole lot of fun with it so far. Even the steering wheel, you can see like the quality of the leather on this is absolutely awesome. It's just got a tiny little bit of shine to it, but I've seen cars that are 10 years newer than this and they've got big rips and the stitching's coming out and all that kind of stuff. They definitely put some quality into these back in the day. So the first thing you'll notice when you sit down in any Porsche, they do have the key on the left. And the reason for that is back in the racing days when you had to run to your car, they figured it, was, it would save you a little bit of time if you could jump in, turn your key with the left hand, and then with the right hand, you could throw it in gear and be off and ready to go and just kind of saved you a second or two. On the GoPro but there is a little bit of a wind whistle and I've, I've kind of looked into it and at one point I had the car at the dealership to get one of the condensers replaced in the front because there's one on either side and I found that inside the grill there's a little piece in there and they must have forgot to take a bolt out or something but they ended up cracking it and ever since I got it back it's had a wind whistle which always has annoyed me so I might have to go try to search out some parts to fix that but just kind of one of those things but we have a tunnel coming up <laughs> these cars they love to rev like honestly I keep this thing at about 4,000 rpm just kind of cruising around and it's very happy there this has Vario Cam 1 so it does have like what Honda would call VTEC so when you go into I think it's 5,500 rpm They'll actually change the cam angle and give you that little extra power. And you kind of feel it too when it starts to change. You get a little bit more pushback in the seat. And it's just kind of one of those things that they are playing with the technology back then. And it's all stuff that modern cars have today. just kind of a rip through the country with me in the Porsche Boxster. Hope you guys enjoyed coming along. Just kind of trying to break up this quarantine monotony a little bit. Have a little bit of fun with you guys on these nice days and explore kind of the cars that we have and just basically come out and have a good time. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down.